Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to convert some very standard concepts such as area, volume, force, pressure, work, power, momentum, and impulse into these standard units. And as you will see, typically they will all converge down to units of length, mass, and time. So meters, length, so length, no. Length, mass, and time. So therefore, length is in meters, mass is in kilograms, and time is in seconds. So let's see how this works. For area, we have length times length. Therefore, the units become meters times meters, which of course is equal to meters squared. And the terms of volume, that's length times length times length. In other words, the units are meters times meters times meters, which means it's equal to meters cubed. Now notice I use these brackets, and yes, they're supposed to be brackets, to indicate units. So the units of area are meters squared, the units of volume are meters cubed, and that's the notation I like to use to indicate these are the units of that particular concept. Now when, when it comes to force, we have newtons. Those are the units of force. But a newton is the force that gives the mass of one kilogram the acceleration of one meter per second squared which means that newtons can be converted to the standard units as follows. This is therefore equal to the units of kilograms times meters per second squared, and these are the basic foundational units of the concept of force. And that's how we can break the units of everything down to kilograms, meters, and seconds. Now, you'll see that when we get to electricity and magnetism, we may need one or two more for very special reasons, and you'll see that when we get there. Now let's go to pressure. Pressure is defined as force divided by area, which has the units of pascals. Now pascals can be divided into the, the fraction of newtons divided by area, which is meter, squ meter squared. So this can be written as newtons per meter squared. And since newtons was defined as kilograms meters per second square, this can now be written as kilograms meters per second square, and in the denominator we still have the meter squared from the area, which means that this meter scans out one of those, and this then becomes kilograms per meters times second square as the basic units of pressure. Now let's look at work. Work can be defined as force times distance. And it also can be defined as energy. They all have the same units. And the units are joules. Joules are units of energy. But since work can be defined as force times distance, we can also write units in terms of force, which is newtons, and distance, which is meters. And then notice that newtons can be written as kilograms meters per second squared. So this can be converted to kilograms meters per second squared times, we already have a meters in the numerator, so this becomes kilograms meters squared per second squared, and those are the units that we have for work, force times distance, or the units of energy. Now the units for power. Power is work divided by time, and that can be expressed in terms of watts. So therefore, watts must be a joule per second because work is expressed in joules and time is expressed in seconds. So a watt, by definition, is a joule per second. And since joules can be expressed in terms of newton times meters, this can be written as newtons times meters divided by seconds. And since newtons can be written as kilograms meters per second squared, we still have the meters here and the seconds here, which can then be simplified to kilograms meters squared per second cubed. And these are the units for power. Now let's talk about momentum. Momentum is the product of mass times velocity, which means it should have the units of, for mass, kilograms, and for velocity, that's meters per second distance over time. In other words, those are the standard units for momentum. And finally, let's look at impulse. Impulse is, by definition, force times time, which means that this can be defined as the units of newtons times time, which is seconds. 
And of course, newtons can be defined as kilograms, meters per second square times seconds. So this seconds cancels out one of those. And this can then be written as kilograms, meters per second. And if you look carefully, those are the exact same units that we got for momentum. So impulse and momentum have the same units, which makes sense because impulse can be defined as the change of momentum, so by necessity, they should have the same units. Notice how everything can simply be broken down into units of simply mass, length, and time. And that's how we're going to do that with all of the units that we see in physics. But again, when we get to electricity and magnetism, there'll be some more changes we have to adapt to. But that's how that works.